Thanks for trying Clock Builder Pro, the free tool for radio professionals for organising your music rotations and clocks. The following short video will run through how to use the program. To start, simply click the link on this main page and sign up for a free account in the new window that pops up. Make sure your browser isn't blocking pop-up windows. Clock Builder Pro is totally free, but we require you to sign up so we can confirm you're not a spam robot and so we can save your files so you can work on it later. Simply put in your email address and a password for your account. We'll then immediately email you a confirmation link, click that link and you're set up. Once your account is validated, simply log in with the username and password. If you forget your password, just click the link and we'll email it to you. Next, either open an existing session that you've saved before or start a new session. To name your session, it's best if you name it something you'll remember later. Many stations only change clocks every few months, so it's a good idea to put in something that will identify it later. If you work for multiple stations, it makes sense to label the station too. For example, Gold FM, June 2011. If you choose to open a session, you'll see a drop-down list of saved sessions for your account. Choose the one you want and click Open. Once you're in the program, the first screen you'll see is the Rotations tab. The Rotations tool calculates approximate rotation times for each category. This helps determine required category sizes and numbers of calls per hour following your music research. Firstly, enter your category name. The next pieces of information required to help build your clocks is the relative age and strengths of your categories. The relative age of each category will help evenly spread the eras when you build your clocks. For example, if you have categories from the 60s, 70s and 80s, you would give the 60s categories a value of 1, the 70s a value of 2 and the 80s a value of 3. If you've got 60s powers and 60s secondaries categories, they would both have a value of 1 as they're of the same era. The oldest category should have a value of 1, with each newer era a larger number. For stations with currents, we recommend you use different numbers for A's and B's. For example, 2000's gold might have number 3, then recurrents 4, A's 5 and B's 6. The strength information allows you to assign either power, secondary or tertiary to each category. This will help separate weak songs when building clocks, ensuring no secondaries or tertiaries play back to back. Next, enter the number of songs in the category and the number of calls per hour you want in an average clock, for example, two calls per hour. Lastly, enter how many hours per day the category is active. For example, if a secondary category isn't active in breakfast, the hours may only be 21 rather than the full 24. If you're recycling into five hours of mid-dawns, then the number might be 19. The default assumes the category is active in every hour of every day, so 24. Enter that information for each of your categories. As you change the information, your theoretical rotation will be calculated. You can of course alter the figures to work out the ideal rotations for each category and determine how many clock calls you'll need, how many songs in each category required, etc. If the category has a turnover of less than a day, the rotation will be displayed in hours and minutes, useful for current and some recurrent categories. If the category has a turnover of more than a day, it will be displayed in days and hours, so any gold categories. You'll note the totals are also calculated, your total universe size and total calls per hour. When you're happy with the information and rotations, you can move to the Clocks tab to start building your clocks. In the Clocks tab, you'll notice that your categories are listed, plus two empty clocks. Based on the information you entered in the Rotations tab, the categories will have different graphics. Powers will be coloured green, secondaries orange and tertiaries red. The age of the categories will be shown by the length of the coloured bar. The longer the bar, the newer the category. These displays are useful to graphically show in the clocks whether you have two secondaries or tertiaries in a row or an even spread of eras. Most stations will always want to ensure weaker tracks are surrounded by powers and that there are no runs of all old or all new songs. And this is easy to see in these clocks. In addition to the categories, you'll also notice the spot blocks and talk break placeholders which don't count as song positions but are useful markers when building clocks. To build your clocks, it's as simple as dragging the category into the clock. You'll notice that when the song is dropped into the clock, it will appear with a position number for your reference as well as a flip button on the right. The table next to the category list helps you track the number of songs in your clocks compared to the aims from the rotation tab. This way, you know that your clocks will match your ideal rotations. Many stations use two alternating clocks. In this case, we've called them Clock A and Clock B. But if you're only using one clock, you can simply leave Clock B blank. 
Once songs are in the clock, you can continue to drag them to different positions or drag them to the trash if you want to delete them from the clock. If you prefer to flip two songs, then simply click the flip button on one song, then click the flip button on the second song and their positions will swap. Remember to save your work on a regular basis by either clicking the Save button at the bottom of the window or from the Utilities menu. The Utilities menu has a number of other options to manage your work, from clearing clocks and rotation information to saving and deleting existing sessions. And that's it. Have fun and thanks for using Clock Builder Pro.